Unless you've been living under a rock, you've most definitely heard of the game Power World by now. This game, from the day it launched, has taken the entire internet by storm. In the first 8 hours of Power World launching, it sold 1 million copies. A company that pretty much no one has ever heard of, just out of the blue, managed to create a game so great that it rivals megacorps like Nintendo, EA, and Bethesda. Speaking of Nintendo, almost immediately after it was launched, Power World was dubbed Pokemon with Guns. And if for whatever reason you're confused and don't know what I'm talking about, then I'll let you have yourself a good look. Yeah, that's, that's basically the gist of the game. It's essentially if Pokemon, Ark Survival Evolved, and The Legend of Zelda got together for some special time, and this was the child that came from it. However, despite the popularity that Power World has accumulated, there have been a very loud minority who have been trying to condemn the game, whether it be claims of copying and ripping off other games, or accusations of the developers, Pocket Pair, using AI for some parts of the game. We'll talk about those issues in just a bit, but for now though, I want to ask you a question. Why is it that Power World popped off in the first place, and also, how? I'm sure a lot of you are like me, and before it's launched, you never even knew of Power World's existence. Though I don't know this for sure, before its release, I'm guessing that Power World had a very small following. However, there's something interesting you gotta know about how things explode in popularity. There are two general factors that can contribute to an explosion, and these factors are quality and luck. And also how much money you spend on advertising, but that's a given. Anyway, quality is exactly what it sounds like. It's how good your game is, how polished it is, how in-depth it is, how good the story is. Unless you're a megacorp that already has a well-known franchise like Call of Duty or 2K, then this factor is almost always required for any game to gain popularity. Then there's luck. Now, when I say luck, I don't mean luck. Not the traditional kind of luck, at least. I mean luck as in someone sees your game and likes it enough to spread the word about it to their friends. Then the friends check it out, and if they like it enough, they tell their friends about the game, and so the cycle repeats itself until half the damn planet is checking out your game. That's what I mean by luck. You have to obtain the right crowd at the beginning to ensure that your game can spread and reach a broader audience. However, to do that, you need your game to have great quality so that even those who are like, a game about putting innocent creatures in your balls? Well, that just sounds like Pokemon. Those people will want to play your game as well. In short, the better quality your game is, the more likely the people who find your game will be willing to spread the word. And that's essentially how Power World popped off, except it did it on an exponential scale. Now, I'm not saying that Power World didn't have anybody supporting it before it blew up. It's difficult to accurately estimate how many supporters Pocket Pair had before its launch, because that information is buried underneath hundreds upon hundreds of videos that have the Power World in their title. What I am saying is that this small group of individuals saw how well put together this game was and was like, holy sh**, I'm gonna post about this on social media. And then those posts blew up and suddenly everybody and their dog was buying Power World. So there you go. That's how Power World could have blown up. But then the question remains, who was the initial audience for Power World before it blew up? That's right, Xbox Game Pass holders. They're the ones who first saw Power World, since when it released, it appeared on the Game Pass, and when someone saw the thumbnail, they recognized what they thought looked like Pokemon, and they clicked on it. The rest after that is history. That's what I believe happened, at least. And this is actually a really great spot to segue into the second part of the video, the drama. Remember how I said a couple minutes ago how Power World was like if Pokemon, Ark, and Zelda had a kid? Yeah, well, the resemblance between Power World and those games are, at some times, really uncanny. Mainly Ark and Pokemon. First off, let's just clear our heads of any outside games for a moment and look at Power World and its gameplay and mechanics. You start the game by creating your character, and you're able to pretty much alter every single part of them, sometimes making them look like how a six-year-old would draw somebody. Anyway, once you create your character, you tweak some settings of the world you'll be playing in, and then you spawn. After spawning in, you explore around for a little bit, 
and you come across your first pal. Look at how cute they are. Who could harm such a little... Oh. Um. Anyway, after exploring around and gathering materials, you can start leveling up. When you level up, you can learn engrams and craft new items like clubs, balls to catch your pals with, and eventually, guns. I'm sure that you'll be a responsible person and only use the guns to protect yourself in case a pal starts attacking you and you won't use it for anything nefarious. Oh? What's that? You slaughtered an entire species of pals and recreated the transatlantic slave trade and now your pals are working 24-7 without breaks or pay? <laughs> Wonderful! And that's Pal World in a nutshell. But did you notice anything familiar? Well, let's rewind and take a closer look. The character creation, the world editing layout, and the way you unlock new recipes are eerily similar to Ark. The guns and slavery are like Ark as well if you play the game long enough. Trust me, I've built my own fair share of Anki metal farms. Hell, even the thumbnail for Pow World literally includes a version of the obelisk from Ark. I'm not accusing Pow World of directly copying Ark, because they did innovate on everything mentioned in one way or another, but when you take the two games' thumbnails and put them side by side, there's no denying there is an obvious resemblance. Again, there's nothing wrong with being inspired by a game and innovating on past ideas, and I am a lifelong Ark fanboy, so I will admit, I am biased. I'm just saying though, there's a resemblance there. Anyway, we've looked at the similarities between Power World and Ark, but what about Pokemon? Well, there's really only one, and that's the Pals. Like in Pokemon, Pals are wild creatures that have special abilities, and these Pals can be captured with special balls that you chuck at them. This is one of the main areas where people have been getting upset at Power World, as they believe they are blatantly ripping off Pokemon. However, there's an easy rebuttal to that claim, and it's that, yeah, Pal World is like Pokemon. However, what these people are forgetting is that Nintendo slash Pokemon do not have a patent on the idea of capturing creatures that have special abilities. That idea, while generally contributed to Pokemon, is not exclusive to them. The reason why people believe in that though, is because Pokemon has been one of the only games that have been released with that concept. Also, no other company has been bold enough to try and enter the space due to the backlash they might receive. Kind of like now. Pocket Pair entered the scene at just the right time though, as the mainline Pokemon games have been going downhill recently. Listen, I like Pokemon just as much as the next guy, but you're telling me that Game Freak, a multi-billion dollar company, produced a game that looks like this, while Pocket Pair created Pal World with just a couple million dollars, and it looks like this. And no, it's not due to the limitations of the hardware on the Switch. Just look at the tiers of the Fallen Kingdom, and that point is immediately disproved. Speaking of graphics, along with Pokemon simps trying to diss Power World, there have been some rumors going around that Power World has used generative AI tools to create their game, most namely the designs of the PALs. These rumors, I believe, were originally due to a series of tweets that the CEO of Pocket Pair, Takuro Mozobi, has sent out over the past few years, where he has expressed interest in AI and its use in game development, with him seeming particularly amazed by AI generations of Pokemon. Also, one of the games produced by Pocket Pair, called AI Art Imposter, uses generative art AI as a core part of its mechanics. However, despite this, at this point in time, there is no concrete evidence that Pocket Pair has used AI in the development of Power World. Now, do I personally believe that they did? Well, maybe. I'm not gonna believe that they have because I believe in the rule of innocent until proven guilty, but what I am saying is that there is an above average chance that they might have. I not only say that because of their past, but also because of the designs of the pals. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at these two images. The one on the left is a pal, and the other one is Mewtwo a Pokemon. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that these two have some similarities. Now, whether this was the result of a generative AI tool that was given the prompt, create an alternative design for the Pokemon in the list that follows, or because there was a design artist who took heavy inspiration from Pokemon, remains to be seen. 
Then again, if you're creating a cat creature for your game, and you have kind of a similar art style to that of the 3D models of Pokemon, then there's obviously going to be some similarities. Because it's a cat, and most cats have the same general structure. You get what I'm trying to say, though. Well, that's all the major accusations against Power World that I can think of. But even with these accusations, will the Pokemon Company come after Pocket Pair? If they can, I'm almost certain they will. As of right now, the only statement we've gotten from the Pokemon Company regarding Power World is this. Quote, We intend to investigate and take appropriate measures to address any acts that infringe on intellectual property rights related to Pokemon. Essentially, this means that they are going to search Power World from top to bottom to see if they can find anything. And if they do, they are going to sue Pocket Pair for every last penny they got. Fun fact, if you didn't know, the Pokemon Company and Pocket Pair are both based in Japan. And in Japan, there is no such thing as fair use, like here in the US. In the US, for example, you can have a reaction YouTube channel that watches shows like TED or Adventure Time, and that channel can be monetized so long as you only use short clips and add a generous amount of commentary and altercations to the original work. That is what fair use is. If something is created by someone in Japan, however, and you do the exact same thing, then you're f***ed, especially if what you made becomes more popular than the original. So, Pocket Pair better not have infringed on Pokemon intellectual property, or else bye bye Power World. So now, let's try and summarize everything we've learned in the two sentences. Power World is currently popping off, but Pokemon meat riders are accusing the creators, Pocket Pair, of using AI and ripping off Pokemon. If a Pokemon company is investigating Power World for any intellectual property violations, and if they find any, they're going to sue Pocket Pair to high heaven, and Power World will, in one way or another, will be removed from the world. And with that being said, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let me know down in the comments below. I do read everything y'all type because I love interacting with y'all and love listening to y'all's opinions. Also, just to cover my ass so I don't get screamed at by the Pokemon fanboys, I'm neutral in this debate. I don't love Power World, but I think it's a cool game. Anyway, stay safe out there, and I'll catch you on the flip side.